Hello everyone. I'm going to do a quick tour of my studio. Um, it's behind this door, which is really just a room, but I've converted it into my studio, my man cave, my place to go and uh, explore my creativity. Welcome to my studio. Now there's a lot of things in here, so I really don't know what to show, what not to show. I'm just gonna pan around so you can get an idea of the size of the room because it's really not that big, but it is jam packed <laughs> with a lot of stuff that can be easily seen and some of it is kind of hidden. And uh, I'm standing in that doorway entry there's one closet, a double closet here that I use to store stuff as well. So let's begin um, taking a quick glance at my studio. So now please excuse my wall. It's getting ready to undergo painting. I'm getting ready to repaint. I've done a lot of hanging things up, nails and shelves and different things that has been removed. So I've spackled to try and smooth it out and then I'm gonna be repainting the entire room. But a lot of the pictures that you see hanging around are from the peel off uh, kits that I actually make and sell. And I also use peel off in a lot of my senior community activities. But this is just to give you a, a kind of a quick glance. There's probably somewhere in the neighborhood of a little over a thousand of these uh, type of projects. So I would not be able to show you them all. Um, here's my main printer that I use to print my watercolor stuff. This drawer holds a lot of junk. This is my TV that I get to watch or sometimes it's watching me. This is a shelf that holds uh, some acrylic markers. Some plates are down at the bottom, some canvas projects, bird houses, uh, extra reams of paper. This shelf holds a great deal of things, starting from the bottom, not counting the gojo that's on the floor, which is a great hand cleaner, but some palettes that I use in my workshops. Um, one of these tubs to the right is just mostly uh, ink and drawing stuff. And then the one to the left is mostly watercolor equipment and watercolor paints and watercolor palettes and things of that nature. Above that, you have some more watercolor brushes in those numbered boxes, sponges, cups for water, books with watercolor images in it, and here's about 20 watercolor palettes. Then I have my cutting mats, and then I have my clay shelf, which is primarily what this is. Uh, there's a hot glue gun, uh, there's a rolling pen, and then there's clay and other items. This top shelf here holds all of my, uh, most of my drawing and pastel equipment. As you can see at the end, there's some Prismacolor, some Cinulaire. Then we have some more, uh, what brand is this? I believe this is Unison. And then you have some Rembrandt soft pastel, some gouache. Then we come over to my uh, drawing pencils, which are not necessarily all in these tens. A lot of them I put in these different binders, so it's easy for me to get to. There's my uh, Carbothellos and my Karen Dashes and some more Prismacolor colored pencils, watercolor pencils. Uh, here's some Dort Light Fast drawing uh, colored pencils some Faber-Castell polychromo pencils. Then you go to the Giaconda and you have some more Faber-Castell pastel pencils and drawing set, a setup, and this is also a drawing setup here. This wall contains more pictures, my backpack. Um, let me step back just a smidget. This is my um, press and then there's my watercolor palette that I use for studio painting. Usually a lot of brushes in the window, but I've recently cleaned all of that out with my Norman Rockwell mug. He's one of my most favorite artists of all time. This shelf is usually packed 
with those panels, which at the bottom you can see there's two sets of 80. You can't see the ones in the back, but that usually fills up that entire shelf, but I have to reorder some more. Now let me try to explain some of this stuff. This computer, sole purpose, is when I'm shooting a video, I can see the video and make sure that everything's in alignment. I remember the last time I tried this, my camera was kind of all over the place because I couldn't really see what I was doing. I can mirror on this computer and I can also mirror on this TV. And we'll get to what those icons are because they're all my channels um, that I have currently on YouTube. There's my air purifier, which any artist should have that in their space. This is my more of electronic stuff, my desk. I keep my phone on a stand. I get a charger back there. There's my uh, Alexa, which she's going to light up because I just said her name. Forget it. I'm not quite Alexa. Sure that I, I know. I know, Alexa. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to say your name. Alexa, stop. And some. There's my mannequin. It's my pencil sharpener. Um, and this this right here is my Wacom tablet. I just like to keep it still in the box to keep the dust from gathering on it on the screen itself. And there's the pen that goes to it behind it. This desk is really a drawing table. It could actually flip up. You can see where this is is here to help with the guard, but I don't use it for that. I use it as a tabletop desk for my printer and my Wacom tablet so that they can both have room. This is my wall of rulers. <laughs> this is my wall of all different type of rulers from um, perspective drawing, T-squares, hammers, nails, uh, angles, geometry stuff, all of that. And these are some items people painted in some of my workshops when we used to use styrofoam plates to mix our paints on and I just got them as gifts you know this is my cutter and then before I get into explaining what's in these drawers let me just go over this really quickly in this room I run two businesses J Robinson art and peeloff.com and I also have several different um, channels that I shoot videos for, which is the J. Robinson Art, which is drawing. This one is J. Robinson Art, kind of general. Then we move on to J. Robinson Art Air Dry Clay. Then I have my help demo area where if you send me um, pictures that you need help on, I would be able to shoot a video showing how I can help you. And then I would be able to use that channel just for that. And this one is for pastels, the one with the lizard on it. Then I have watercolor, a J. Robinson Art watercolor channel, a J. Robinson Art uh, painting kits for the peel off, a J. Robinson Art acrylic. So between those one, two, three, four, five, six, eight, nine channels that keeps me very busy shooting various videos for various different media to reach out to people within the class and just people in general, mainly the people in the class, but I open it up for anybody who wants to join in. So now, let's take a look at my drawing setup. This drawing setup is specifically to be able to shoot my overhead videos. So I would take the camera that I have in my hand and put it in here, sorry, in this device, and that light would shine down and I would shoot straight down to that table. So that's why it's set up that way, so that I can have a quick and easy access. I have a little drawer over here. This is where I keep my air, I mean my um, blow dryer. This is just for utensils, very rarely used, but occasionally. And now let's get to some of this good stuff. These little drawers here, I like them because they help me to organize. And I believe that with doing so many different things, staying organized is not even an option, it's very mandatory. So one of the drawers houses my uh, extraneous drawing pencils. Definitely not all of my pencils, but enough of them. And then I come down here, and this is for my mechanical pencils. See? And then this drawer holds my stumps and stylus. 
And then this drawer is for anything that's erasers. All different types of erasers. This is I call miscellaneous pencils. And this one I use for my micron pens. And I still have packs elsewhere. Then these are my art pens. These are a little bit more advanced than the microns. These are Copics. There's some microns in here. This is Copic and these are Copics. And this particular brand, I believe, is Stedler. Yes. And uh, this is this is a, a more, I think, a more serious drawer for me when I start to use these. Then I have my calligraphy pens. Just, just to play with. I'm not very good at lettering, but I, I like to try everything. And this is my graphite and pastel sticks. And it's not all of them because there's more on those shelves back there. Sets of them. And this is, again, another set of miscellaneous pencils. So you see the miscellaneous pencils holds the white ones or red, blue, and just different pencils and, and sharpeners. This is also a drawing desk. So that's two drawing desks that you've seen. Let me just, let me just continue down this, this drawer here. This one right here holds my pastel drawings. So you can see I'm in the process of painting a, a pastel frog. So I keep it in here so to, you know, just keep safe. And there's other items underneath it, but we won't get into that. This is for my Chinese art items. This drawer here holds all the equipment that I need to work in Chinese art, which I've done very little of it, but I, I do experiment and play with it. This one right here is a miscellaneous drawer just holding some palettes and some oil paints and some stainless steel rulers and some strips of watercolor paper so I could do some color swatches. This is my pastel pans. There's actually two. There's another set underneath here. I tried to get as many colors as I can for the pastels and all of the devices that I need to, you know, create in pastel. So that's what this drawer holds. This drawer holds the glassine paper, which I give out a lot in class, and I also use it to draw so I don't smear uh, on my drawing surfaces. And this one right here is kind of a miscellaneous, smaller cutting boards, clipboards, foam boards, stuff like that is in here. Let's jump to the other side. Now we're jumping to the other side, we're gonna go to some pastel related items. See, so there's some more pastel related stuff and these stumps are specifically used for my pastels. Uh, these devices are specifically used for pastels so i keep anything pastel related in this drawer this is for watercolor uh, brush pens so that's all that's in here is a bunch of different brush pens tips nibs and different sizes for that then i have my blending and uh solvent brushes which is in here i hope i'm not doing a really good job here but i'm trying i'm not very good at the camera but I'm trying. And then this is my cutters. This is for anything that cuts down to surgical knives, exacto knives, scissors, blades, more scissors. And this one right here is kind of a miscellaneous. This holds my uh, hard uh, pencils that are really hard to come by. My 2H, I bought like, a, like 12 of them or something like that. And then in this drawer, this garbage out. This drawer holds my uh, pastel paper. So there's a bunch of different pads in here for pastels. This is 11 by 14 and 11 by 17 papers from uh, really, really good Stanford and you know, different brands in here of uh, drawing paper and pastel paper that's in this, this drawer. It's a bunch of them. And then over here I have my premium pastel, which is the pastel mat and... Uh, a very nice young lady by the name of uh, Joan uh, showed me these things. So I have two sets for my watercolors. But this is mostly pastel papers in here. Really good papers too. And then I have some really good watercolor papers in here. This is where I keep all my arches and my... Um, what's the name of this brand? This is a, a Bao Hung. Supposedly just as good. Uh, from overseas. I have a few drawings on some gator boards and some larger 
uh, sheets of uh, books of uh, uh, hot press, cold press, arches paper in here. And then if I come down here, I go to my Stonehenge papers in different sizes. See, range from different sizes, and I do I do drawings, you know, on those as well for the Stonehenge. It's really good paper. I like Stonehenge. And then down here, I have my my watercolor drawer where I keep my tape, my drawing pencils, my watercolor sets, my rag, my watercolor rolls with really, really good brushes in here, which I'm not going to break out and go through all of that. <clears throat> but trust me, there's between good, medium, and high quality brushes down there. So now let's go to the shelf behind me. The yellow bins that you see are pretty much holding artwork for some of my painting workshops. So there's thousands of little panels in there. I'm not going to bother showing you all of that. And then I have more, uh, let me move my garbage can, sorry. I have more uh, palettes. Move my chair. I have more palettes for my workshops. I try to keep those stacked and ready to go. We do probably 60 to 65 art workshops with acrylic painting a month, not counting the drawing classes, the watercolor classes, or even the advanced acrylic classes. So those are totally separate from what I'm showing you here. But yet the palettes could be used to multitask. Up here I have my, my drawing materials, materials that I've drawn or gathered for my, my drawing classes, my watercolor classes, and markers, which is in the class, but I keep some anyway. I keep my binders with photographs and imagery and things of that nature. My cutter, my beautiful daughter, <laughs> a small thing of Legion paper. Inside this box is probably about 20 small, let me just show you, let me just show you. Inside this box is about 20 very tiny, just bear with me, see, very tiny samples. I bought this sample set and inside is various different grades of uh, Stonehenge paper for you to test on it. To me, every company should do this. Excuse me a second. I believe that... Um, any brand of watercolor paper or even drawing paper, this would be a great thing to sell in all different makes and models, if you will. I'm going to bother closing it close it later. Because you get to sample out and see how things work. So let's go to my small library. There's much more books in my storage unit. These are just some that I happen to have on hand here. This is where I keep my iPad and my MacBook Pro. I use this for Procreate. I use this for another facet of my business, which um, I just always wanted a Mac MacBook Pro, so I got that and I utilize it, but not necessarily on an everyday basis. Then I have over here all of my drawing pads from watercolor to um, drawing and journals and you know things of that nature, stuff that I use to actually create um, artwork for myself for the class, so I work from here. Over here underneath, what you're looking at, see if you got an angle, is all of my, my papers on a roll. I have my table. I have several of these drawing boards in different sizes, cutting mats, canvas sheets, some of my artwork, portfolio bags, newsprint paper. This is to go outside and, pl and paint plain air. Uh, these are devices that I could use for cameras, lights, things of that nature. This is where I keep my labels that I put on the back of my um, canvas panels. These are my markers. I have from Copic to all different types of Prismacolor. And I believe one of these is an off-brand. I can't remember the name, but these are really, really nice. Cl Clary Art, yeah. And I bought this foam. These are, these are my Copics. So, and then underneath here, I have all kind of pencil sharpeners, uh, cameras, uh, electric erasers. Um, I can't even tell you what's in all of these boxes, but there's all kind of different tools that I, that I have. Uh, battery powered. This and scissors. That <laughs> my clay, my uh, plastic uh, sleeves, small canvases label paper this is actually a gift my daughter got for me which is a burger 101 
um, projector, but I've never ever used it. Used it to project images for murals, painting. But I've I've only I've only tested it to see that it worked, but I never ever had any call to actually use it. And this is my AC battery power, just in case. Behind here, I try to make use of all spaces. <laughs> Behind here, I have several more um, portfolio bags. And as you can see, there's a, some big arches paper back here. Uh, what else? I have this drawer next to me, which holds some of my graphite pencils, gel pencils. Uh, this does, it looks like junk is in here, but trust me, this is all useful stuff. It just looks junky. See, my more micron pens, more pencils, more markers, uniballs, uh, electronic stuff. Uh, this also uh, plugs. This right here is my, my tape. And I meant to give this to another good friend named Mylene. Uh, this is a, a masking uh, fluid. And a P-touch, of course, and this is just papers. So the last place I'm going to show you is inside my closet. Down on the bottom here, I keep rolls of toilet tissue, paints back there. It's my drills, my files of pictures. Um, this is all kind of tools. That iron is actually a tool. There's more paints. There's more canvases. There's more uh, watercolors or actually watercolors yet in boxes that I haven't even used yet. Some clay molds that I made, paper, palettes. I like to keep these blank palette sheets. They come in really, really handy. Envelopes. Um, these are both irons or presses. More books. My acrylic paints, brushes. These are different um, things that I use for my stencils, for my, my paint and peels. These are my cut sheets. More watercolor stuff, transfer paper, vinyl sheets, tote bags, squares, because we do tote bags in some of my workshops, extra cutouts on sheets. This is my clay pieces. Uh, they're inside here, a lot of different designs that I've actually made, clay stencils that I've made myself to help create those because I need to be able to have people to make them too. Uh, this is experimental cuts on stencils, old stencils. This right here is not just um, a vacuum, but this is actually pastel dust. This actually sucks up the dust when I'm creating a pastel so I don't have to blow it or anything like that. And these are just files. These are blank palette sheets. Behind here is another set of these small uh, portfolio uh, booklets to hold my, my uh, note cards and paintings. These are journal books, my gessos, my Maj Paj. This is clay, paints, ribbons. Uh, these are, 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 are sealers for my for my paintings themselves, plastic bags, if you will. Uh, this is 140 pound watercolor paper, metal bowls. So I'm just giving you the tour. This is my papers. Uh, these are some these are some acrylic paintings that I've done for workshop classes. These are how I keep my notes separate from air dry clay to Chinese watercolor to drawing to uh, out of state when I wanted to promote my business videos, watercolor workshops. This is my canvas pads. Uh, these are portfolio books. And there's more portfolio books all back here that hold a lot of different artwork. And that is my studio. And I just want to say this about it all. It's a small space, but it's jam-packed with a lot of tools. And I try to make use of everything that I have. So none of it is just on a show. A lot of it I am flipping through from day to day. And sometimes my time is not my time. It just depends on what's coming up, what do I have to do, and you know what do I have to prepare for. I prep a lot of my work right here on this table, which this is nothing more than a desk. And I like it because it actually raises up and lowers down. See, it raises up and lowers down. I have a big 24 by 36 mat over here. I have my sheets that I could cut. My cutter is over here. I have a I have a small light table here, graphite paper here, sharpeners, all different kind of tools on the wall. I don't know how many T-squares I have, like way too many. That frying pan is actually a tool that I use to sometimes hold things flat. A lot of notes for scheduling. And you can see here, 
focus on the system. So everything has a system. Everything that I do, I've developed a system for it. So this way, when it comes time to make use of things or do things, I have a system that I follow almost religiously just so I can stay neat, stay organized, get stuff done and be completed. And the system only works when you work the system, which is another truth. I mean, if you're not working the system and you don't have a system, then you're kind of working crazily. And because I deal in so many different things, I mean, I've shown you the YouTube channels. That's a job by itself, let alone all of the classes and all of the help I try to provide to individuals. That's why sometimes I may not be timely, but I get there. You know, I will get there because I have so many things that I'm doing. I just try to make time for everyone and every single thing. And see, staying organized is not an option. It's a must. And then I keep my uh, apron hung back there. I think that's about it. I think I pretty, pretty much kind of gave you the, the full, maybe even more information than you wanted to hear. And some of it I may have left out because I might have sped past something. But it's a lot of stuff in this small space. And it this is where I spend most of my time. If I get up... 2.30, 3 o'clock in the morning, this is where I come. I come right to this space right here between working on that computer and working on this desk. Those are my two most, uh, well, I can't say that because I do work a lot back here as well. So I don't know. I guess I'm all over. I guess I'm all over. I guess I'm all over. But there's my studio and welcome to it. And I'm hoping someday to actually expand this so that I could bring some of the items that I have in the storage unit, like my larger uh, painting easels and other desks that I have, so that I can leave my painting area up and work on it, my watercolor area up, work on it, my acrylic area up, my drawing area up. Like I wanna be able to have different workstations for the different things I love to do as well as what I do as a job, because remember, I actually run two very successful businesses from this room, two. J. Robinson Art is the major and Peel Off is coming up strong. But um, then I run eight or nine YouTube stations as well as the individual help from the people who send me emails, who need help or want to share, or we have discussions or questions, or I need to put information out. So it becomes a task. It becomes a task. And that's why that whole thing about focus on the system and the system only works when you work the system. So I guess on that note, I'm going to close out now. Um, I think I've kind of showed you all the nooks and crannies except the plugs. I think there's something else back here. Look, back here there's more of those little drawing boards I was talking about. There's uh, another tabletop easel, my drawing board. More backpacks, more rulers, more, 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 more. And I love experimenting. So thank you for taking the time to, I guess, listen to this. And I hope that you enjoyed it. And it's not the size of the workspace. It really isn't. Because I remember when I didn't have this, I remember I used to work off of the kitchen table. You know, and that was all I had. I remember I took a folding table that you would have for dinner, like a dinner table. You could just put it up and... And, you know, put your food on it and eat it. I used to work off of that, you know. And this used to be a room that was occupied um, by my daughter before she moved out. And then once she moved out for the second time, I decided I would convert it into a workspace. And I've been working at it here ever since. And it's been very successful. It's been, it gets crowded and it gets kind of busy, but it never really gets a wreck. You know, I never let the room get too out of control because if I did that, I would lose control. So the only thing I could do is always work, clean up, work, clean up, work, clean up, work, clean up, work, clean up. And that becomes the rhythm. That becomes the rhythm. So I can stay organized. Like I said, I do probably 60 to 65 workshops on these, these things right here alone every month, not counting the senior and adult, I mean the adult and advanced drawing watercolor and acrylic painting classes that I do as well and not counting the peel-off kits that have to be shipped out so 
this is my studio. This is what I do, and I love it. And I hope you enjoyed the tour. And until next time, take care.